Hello, true, ma true nature medicine tribe. It is Sarah Jane, and I just wanted to make you a short video uh, today. Um, for those of you that know that I had to, I had to assist my beautiful cat Toby yesterday um, in transitioning out of his body. Thank you so much. I am so so grateful uh, for all the beautiful prayers and thoughts and support that you you gave me and my my family at this difficult time and um, yeah I, I kind of feel like I, I have a really sense of, of calm and and completion with this and I wanted to just share some different points of view that I have around death and the dying process um, if you have ever done any work with me um, with chronic disease, with trauma, with your animals, you know that it can be a beautiful process of completion, knowing that we just pass from one form to another and that we can look at death as, as a gift as much as we can look at living. And that death is, is actually just a choice, you know. Uh, we get to choose how we live and we also get to choose how we die if we can start to see things as indefinite living. Um, that we are infinite beings and, and that our bodies, our bodies carry us until they don't anymore. And, and with, with my cat Toby, we've known that that he has had a, a skin uh, cancer condition that that's been going into his brain i first noticed it about probably five six years ago when his one pupil wasn't dilating um the way that it should and and i i've been working on him energetically i've been using the tools that i have and also looking at that you know this life is precious uh, we only have one life and how we live it is is living into the legacy of that that it's not about date um, I know a lot of my friends in America are, are doing their tax returns right now But really looking at the abundance of, of everything and the cycle of life of knowing that We come home when we're complete and and that completion really is just that circle that, that there is no beginning and there is no end and we just go from from one shape and form to another and to, to use the time that we have here as to the best of our ability to to be the greatest version of ourselves that we possibly can and animals come into our lives with contracts uh, their own purposes as well and what I what I wanted to do is just I don't know what I wanted to do, but I guess I just wanted to share share some of the things that actually assist me in those times of, of making big big choices and little choices and and looking at the energy, the intuitive energy of following what you know to be true rather than all the the chaos and the confusion of, of too much information that, that's sometimes out there. And one thing that I do know that, that, that you may, may be able to use in supporting you or someone that you love, uh, whether that be an animal or a tree or um, another human being, is that oftentimes when we're in pain, we tend to leave our body. Um, us, the infinite being, when we're in shock and trauma as well, um, we disassociate from the body. We tend to leave the body because it's just too painful to stay. So one of the ways that, that you can help um, help somebody to transition out of their physical body into, into the other realms until they decide to come back is to connect them back into their body. And how do you do that? Earthing is great. Uh, running a process called restoration of communion with earth to really ground us back into our physical bodies and back onto the earth plane is sometimes all that's required in order to help somebody to then get to choose whether they want to live and heal or whether they want to to transition. And sometimes we need to to really look at that and also release all the projections and expectations and decisions and separations that we may have any attachments that we might have to that person or to that animal that keeps them here when they'd actually rather leave so you know for me my husband wasn't wasn't in a place where he could make the choice to help our cat to to have an assisted death uh, you know as much as his, his body was deteriorating so 
how do we how do we make those tough choices and not go into the guilt that maybe for me it was like looking at you know what could I have done more um, have I exhausted everything that's available to me in in helping my cat have a great quality of life and listening really deeply to that quiet voice of knowing of trusting of intuition and also connecting to the desires and requirements of the of the of the cat in my in this example um, of my cat of asking him every day are you done yet you know is it time yet can you do this on your own uh, do you need assistance in leaving your body and and really getting out of the fear and the projections and the and the guilt that often comes up with that when we have to make these tough choices whether that is you know killing a business or assisting somebody or an animal in in leaving their bodies and and really listening to that voice of reason and I think what a lot of the times why we struggle with this is because we're afraid right we're afraid of making mistakes we're afraid of of being too hasty or taking too long whatever it is this often brings up a lot of procrastination and then then we get into that whole fear cycle again where we actually can't make great decisions when we're in fear so you know again it's about for me getting back into what information do I need to make this this available to me to be able to make an authentic aligned choice in anything that's going on in my life and including you know the the, the animals and the and the people that I that I have a certain responsibility toward and just going into that of asking you know who 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 has this information that I need or uh, what would this look like if I just uh, released all those projections and expectations and anything else that may be holding that in place hey thank you for the face rather than than making a, a decision made out of out of fear which a lot of times looks like no decision it looks like the procrastination it looks like um, killing ourselves or, or killing our, our ideas or our creation or our ability to trust that our bodies can heal on their own if we just get out of our own way so it really is about alignment and then looking at congruency you know where am I being incongruent in what I'm asking for and this goes with manifestation of anything uh, manifestation I think has got a bad rap with with the law of attraction because we all know that just thinking or wanting or asking for something to change by repeating mantras or you know saying that everything's going to be okay when there's a part of you that knows that it isn't and really does require us to stay the course and and really track our track our own North Star trust our intuition to say you know show me what I need to do here show not from a place of lack or scarcity but just show me what is required in this moment so that I can make a choice that's aligned and it's going to get me closer to what I want um, and again you know grounding into that claiming your stake putting your stake in the ground and saying you know what no matter what it takes even though I'm afraid I'm going to commit to doing this so one of the ways that you can help is to ground your ideas ground ground the animal or the person that you're wanting to support so that they can create a decision or a choice made from really having everything that's in, available to them and and then another one is to to really look at you know where are you holding things in place and you might not always you might not always know what that is it's a little noisy around here today um, but you know you might not not know what it is cognitively but you do know and if you just allow yourself to make that quiet inquiry and to get curious about what you're feeling in your body tracking your emotions looking at you know is is what else is possible is there a different way of looking at this do you can you have a different way different point of view on death and 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 also allowing yourself like in the case of my cat last last night yesterday was really honoring their choice honoring their decisions even though I was struggling with my own 
point of views about what suffering looks like and what pain looks like to you know to have to clean his wound every night it, it, it reduced me to tears and I knew a lot of that was because I thought that it was selfish there was some selfishness in the fact that that I was I was putting him through this this awful ritual every night so putting hydrogen peroxide on that and and taking that taking the scab off so that the infection could heal and I could treat that wound um, and recognizing, you know, what was it that, that 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 just would come over me in this in the sadness of feeling his pain, but also noticing my own pain in in being a wounded little bird uh, that 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 really required support. And animals, nature really show us as well that they don't like to be in those heavy vibrations of guilt and shame and blame and regret and and. And pushing all that energy at them they like need us to stay high just as our own bodies our own innate wisdom and intelligence of our bodies function better in healing in the healing mechanism from a higher energy so again tracking your emotions being mindful of where you're dropping down into those lower vibrational resonances of feeling hopeless or inadequate or that you're being selfish so all, the, all, all those all the those voices of the inner saboteur that take us out of knowing that we're doing the best that we can with what we have and and going into the parts that are of you that are struggling with whatever it is that you're having to having to choose right now and and I know so many people are struggling with big decisions right now and and again I just want to say it takes great acts of courage of coming back to the heart and getting into that emotional component so that we can actually look at what is available to us that's going to allow it to change to change our perspective and and make choices out of fear right by recognizing that there is fear there that there is that there is stuff going on that brings up and stirs up all these unresolved parts of our own traumas and our and our own stories around regret or or perhaps where where there could have been another choice and and you acted out of out of fear rather than allowing yourself the time and the space to to identify what that is and then and then expand out on you know what else is available to me here in this moment that can bring in more balance and harmony in in that action of choosing um, and just trusting you know, that intuitive process of just trusting that this just feels right and aligned no matter what other people are saying you know it's just like you've got to know and I spoke about this the other day of knowing when when quitting is an option and when quitting is not an option you know there is no shame in that there is no mistake in that when we're willing to get really honest and truthful with ourselves and look at at it from that space of allowance and generosity and kindness and 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 allowing yourself to have that ceremony you know in regards to my cat giving him those last hours of not having this horrible collar around his neck, giving him the comfort to choose where he wanted to be. He chose to stay to sleep with, with my daughter that night. Uh, giving him the honor and the ceremony, cats really love ceremony, of having his most favorite treat of tuna for dinner and allowing him to, to have the space of ceremony to to say what he needed to say and and complete and also pass on the responsibility as the main the higher he, you know he held the matrix of the other six cats that I have and and it was just beautiful to watch all the cats they just know you know they just nature knows and 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 ceremony is a lovely way of also just allowing your heart to, to be in that moment of knowing that things are changing within in the matrix within the hierarchy and that 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 the legacy continues in in that case of allowing the space of not rushing of, of seeing the beauty in that even though you know it brought up a lot of tears and sadness there were also tears of gratitude and and joy for having had 
Toby in our lives and, and this goes for people as well you know to, to just give yourself that that space of of looking that that what what comes from the earth goes back to the earth and 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 giving the ceremony of grief of moving through the cycles from shape-shifting from one form and one emotion to another and allowing yourself to to have that and process that in whatever 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 is is aligned for you you know we don't all process grief the same way we don't all process any emotions the same way so being able to just hold the space in that container for everybody to just today get up and know that yes we're going to miss his physical presence I keep we always do that we see flashes in that and I was oh, you know I was outside hanging up the washing and I just asked for the universe to to give me that confirmation um, that he had tr he had moved into into the other realm that he no longer was with me in 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 the spirit form that he had made the transition and and a beautiful butterfly came down and literally sat on the the side of the laundry basket and 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 just just stayed with me for a while and then flew off so the universe is always going to show you be be willing to ask for support energetic support uh, little signs and symbols when you need it um, to, to recognize that that even though they may not be in physical form with you anymore um, they're there in, in spirit beyond the visible world uh, they're still there and you can still get messages and you can still still get the guidance and and whatever it is that you're asking for from spirit you know this is this is where we cross into animal totems and spirit guides and, and the angelic realm of just allowing us to to move through whatever it is that we're going through in our own time and in our own way and know that we are divinely supported and 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 love is is all there is so to be able to honor that too and and love what is and and just send love you know in those moments of transition for Toby there was great reverence in it um, and I demanded that you know that that I wanted to hold him and I scratched his neck and he purred and 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 everything was there was nothing to forgive there was just absolute space of of love that's all there was 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 a loving space to 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 have to give thanks and 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 to remember that to celebrate the living you know and that was his message to me yesterday was I may no, lo no longer be holding um, the primary masculine amongst the uh, amongst the other cats in the house and and my my role in the family in in the in the contracts that he had come and the lessons that he came to share with us it was it was just so beautiful to receive that from him that it, everything was exactly as it, as it needed to be and and we could share that moment of transition in 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 loving whatever arises and and there was only love in that moment so if you're going through through a hard time at the moment if you're struggling if you're losing someone or something whether that that is the way your life was uh, whether it is people or animals leaving you, whether you're moving homes that have been your sanctuary for a while, allow yourself to have that moment of reverence and ceremony, to, to go into deep appreciation to honor the living, you know, honor the life you had and honor the life that, that you have that you are that you are moving into. You know, it's the great becoming. I always say don't fake it till you make it, fake it until you become it. And, and I think that goes for anything, any transition in our life, any relationship that's ending, um, new relationships that are becoming, is that there is no fakery in that. It's the willingness to see and, and really hold that intuitive space for yourself to just allow whatever is to arise and love that, even if it's, even if it's difficult for you. So, so yeah, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're struggling, know that it's temporary. I know that in the struggle, it really is just that ability to release yourself from, from, from all the should-haves and the could-haves, all the projections and the rejections and the expectations and the separations that you may have put in place that holds that thing in place that it can't actually go back 
into a new gen generative cycle of renewal and rebirth. Um, and it's the kindest thing that you can do is to love the living, love the life that you have, even if it's, even if you'd like it to be something else, is to love what the gift of it is bringing you and to step into that place to really just forgive the parts of you that think that it's wrong or that you're, you know, that it's not enough and, and go there um, so that you can recalibrate and, and, and create a more harmonic balance of the shape shifting of the things that that are, are changing form whether that's the people whether that's the physical actualization or or the energetic actualization of the creations of the things that are ready to come to you and things that are ready to leave so that you can create more congruency from a space of loving and forgiving the parts that you're beating up so I hope that um, made some sense to you today. I, I look forward to reading your comments and questions on, on what kind of ceremony you, what kind of ritual you um, invoke and enter into in, in times of change and times of missing physical presence of things that are no longer with you. Um, you know, I still get moments of, of great grief and sadness that wash over me of a life one once I once had, of a home that was my sanctuary for a long time and it, it kind of felt like it was ripped away before I had the moments to, to really celebrate and honor that, that, that home. And, and the great thing is, is with these tools that you can go back and do that at any time with people or things. That, that that perhaps you didn't have the time or the safety to to come into completion with before um, and and it brings great peace and, and a sense of great belonging and, and and ceremony in in forgiving yourself for for perhaps not having having that when you did or not being able to because perhaps it wasn't safe or there just wasn't the space for you that there may be now so thank you for joining me. If you're listening to, to this on the replay, uh, let me know what comes up uh, with you around death and, and you know being indebted, which is really where death comes from, was the death of me. And, and look at the places where, where you can move into, into forgiveness and into loving the parts that you feel are unforgivable, unforg um, where you're making yourself wrong. That's actually killing your life as the date, right, as the indebtedness, um, that you can start living into those parts and creating a brighter, more beautiful future to be the greatest version of you that you came here to be. All right, lots of love. Mm -hmm.